Hey everybody, this is Dave from Brick101 and today I'm doing another Super Mario Maker video. Uh, now that Super Mario Maker 2 is out, um, there's a lot of excitement in the community again and I have dived back into the deep end. I poured over a thousand hours into the original Super Mario Maker. Uh, I've already put a hundred plus into Super Mario Maker 2. I love these games, making levels and playing levels made by other people is just so much fun. Um, this game has been so important in my life. It really kind of sparked me to acknowledge my interest in game design, which is something that's been there my whole life, but uh, Super Mario Maker was such a fun and easy way to get back into it that it has led me to actually pursue that as my new career going forward. So I'm going to be starting a program at uh, DePaul in September. So the MFA in game design, I'm going to be learning all about game design so that I can be a game designer <laughs> one day. Um, anyway, so I've been playing Super Mario Maker since it came out. Uh, switched over to Mario Maker 2 and for my first couple levels in Mario Maker 2 um, I was so overwhelmed by the amount of new stuff I figured the easiest thing to do would be to remake some of my best levels from Mario Maker 1 in Mario Maker 2 um, and kind of see what I uh, would change as I had access to new elements but mostly keeping the level design overall the same. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, four levels today, uh, two in Mario Maker 1 and then two in Mario Maker 2, the remixes. Um, I'll put level codes and bookmark links uh, in the description of this video. So if you want to go play these levels before I talk about them um, and experience them for yourself, you know, without me <laughs> ruining it for you, spoiling it for you first, go do that now uh, and then come back and uh, you can hear my thoughts on it. But uh, for those of you who don't have a Wii U or a Switch, I'm gonna play through all four levels uh, and kind of talk about what I've learned about game design from revisiting my own levels and also specifically what I've learned about um, the changes in uh, Mario Maker 2 from the original Mario Maker. All right, so let's go play some levels. So um, first things first, uh, Mario Maker 2 doesn't have a way to directly link to levels yet. Hopefully they'll release something like the bookmark site that they had for Mario Maker 1. But in the meantime, the easiest way to find my levels is to enter my maker ID. So I'm gonna go to my profile, more info, and you can see my maker ID down there. It is 6K7R8270H. Uh, and if you enter that, it should take you, whoop, it should take you to this page. And um, there'll be a little star in the top and you can star me and follow my levels here. I'll show you what that's like for other people. So here's a level I played. It's by Mosh. I'm gonna click on their profile and you can see the stars here. I'm just unfollowing them, sorry Mosh, so I can re-follow them. Um, so following makers is the best way to keep up with their levels uh, until we have a fully robust bookmark site. So if you wanna do that for me and follow my levels, uh, that's the best way to do that. So this first level I'm gonna show you is uh, River Ramble. So this was made for the collaborative project Super Discord Brothers 3, which is a game length project in the style of Super Mario Brothers 3 uh, that I worked on with a bunch of other fun people from the internet. And um, this was not my first level for that project, but it is the earliest level in the game. So it's in world one, level three. So the difficulty was supposed to be pretty easy. Uh, clear rate sitting at 28%, which is not bad. Um, basically it's hard to get anything above 30% for a clear rate if there's any challenges or you know things that can kill you in a level whatsoever. All right, so, Let's play this level. 
Uh, so this was for Jungle World, I believe it was, was the first world. Um, so that's why we've got uh, some trees with vi vines hanging down. Um, and, you know, from other Mario games, one of the hallmarks of a jungle level is kind of the poison water and that there's a level where you can ride a raft over the poison water. However, in Mario Maker 1, you couldn't actually have poison as a feature, uh, let alone a level that was kind of above water with some water in it. So I had to make do with using um, a layer of spikes in front of a uh, light blue semi-solid platform, as you can see here. Uh, so that's kind of the stand-in for poison water. It's not perfect though, because uh, you can walk on it uh, once you have a power-up. Um, and it's not actually, you know, water or liquid. Um, but anyway, this is the beginning. So there's a little hut here, uh, and there's a raft tied up below it. And then if you go through the door, voila, the raft is set free. So this is kind of an auto scroll level in that you're always moving, but it's not actually auto scroll. Uh, you see a Goomba just fell down. Let's get a power up here. There's a, uh, pipe up there. So I put arrows on the tree to kind of indicate where Goombas would be falling from um, so that they don't catch you by surprise. Um, piranha plants going up and down some vines to kind of be like piranha creepers. That's, uh, that's what's going in there. Can I get into that pipe? I think that's a secret. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, you can see the Goombas up above. It's about to fall down. So this is a really, really short level, right? Uh, and the end here is supposed to lead into the next level. So specifically those mushroom platforms are mimicking the style of level 1-4 from Super Discord Brothers 3. Um, so yeah, so that's a pretty short and sweet level. Um, I know there was a, a secret I had in that. Let me see if I can get the secret on my own level. Can I get the secret in my own level? So the idea here of Goombas dropping out of the sky it works all right, but it's not great because you don't really get a lot of time uh, to react to them once they actually come on screen. Uh, all right, let's get this secret up here. And this is like kind of an obscure secret. Uh, you have to climb in a pipe that's in a tree. Uh, oh, and here you're allowed to touch the water. Uh, but again, it's weird because it's not actually water. You're just running on a blue platform at the bottom, but you know, had to do a three because that's uh, really what Mario Brothers 3 is, uh, does a lot is their bonus rooms have a three made of coins in it. Uh, and then I used pipe stacking here so you can't go back in the pipe you came out of because there's a sideways pipe under it. Um, so you can only go out the new exit pipe um, and brings you onto the raft at a little later point. Uh, which means that there's actually two rafts in this level. One of them just starts so far in advance of the player that the player should never see it unless they use that secret exit. Ooh, Goomba got me. Um, so yeah, it was a short and sweet level. Uh, look down there where that awkward line is where the uh, official end of the level doesn't connect to the ground blocks above it. That was such an annoyance in Mario Maker 1. One of the small but uh, really nice improvements they made in Mario Maker 2 is that the end and start platforms actually will not have those weird lines and they'll connect with ground blocks around them. Uh, so yeah, so that's the original River Ramble. So now I'll play through the remix and kind of talk about how, uh, what I learned about Mario Maker 2 in redoing that level. Definitely one thing I would say, uh, the way I implemented the secret in this level, uh, I don't know that I would do again. Uh, it's, it's a pretty tricky maneuver that unless you kind of 
know a lot about Mario and the fact that you could walk on top of the screen there and make that perfect Goomba jump uh, that the, there's a pipe you could go down because you noticed that. It's a pretty uh, tricky secret that I don't think is really in line with what a secret would be at this level in a Mario game, you know, the third level of the first world. Uh, pretty crazy. So I'm gonna jump in with River Ramble Remix. Uh, description, a pleasant river cruise is rudely interrupted. Try to get all 100 coins. Uh, let's play it. Uh, oh. I'm already on a time crunch. If you're paying attention, you might notice that the screen is shifting at different speeds. Uh, that's because I used custom auto scroll in this level. Uh, you can see just sped up there, so that kind of affects uh, where the raft is relative to the rest of the screen. Oh shoot, come on. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I got it. Uh, that would've been sad if I missed that coin. No! Mushroom. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry, I'm getting a little distracted by playing it. Um, so anyway, this is the version in Mario Maker 2. The Goombas are parachuting down. Parachutes are a new thing in Mario 2. We didn't have them there. Upside down piranha plants are also new. Oh, get the 10 coin. Uh, get those three. Oh, I missed one. I literally missed one coin. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, so that was the level. Uh, I built a little castle over here. I'll hit the thing. All right, so that was River Ramble Remix. Uh, so a couple things that I implemented in that that weren't in Mario Maker 1, parachuting enemies, having actual poison, um, you know, being the forest night theme, uh, and then, yeah, uh, custom auto-scroll to have the whole thing. So let me go into the editor for a second. Course bots, that's what I want. Uh... River Ramble Remix. Okay, so this is a trick that somebody on Reddit pointed out and I've been using is that when you're making a level in Mario Maker 2, um, if you are getting close, when you get basically ready to upload it, I always save a second copy of it because once you upload it, you can't um, re-upload that level if you make any changes to it. You'd have to delete it and re-upload it. So I always just make a save copy of my final level right as I'm uploading it um, because, yeah. Otherwise you can't re-upload it even after you edit something. Uh, wait, how do I edit this? Make, oh. I don't know why they call it make rather than edit. Um, so you can see this little Tweety parrot over here. That is the custom auto scroll. Uh, and so when you're in custom scroll mode, you basically have these little points that you can put and then you can choose between three different speeds. Um, so basically I went between speed one and speed two. Uh, I think it switches basically every two screens. I also love that I can zoom out in the editor now. Uh, that you do by pressing L3 or R3 or pushing in on the control strip control stick. Um, so nice to get a wide view of the level. Also great for when you're copying things. But anyway, so that's what the custom scroll looks like. Um, this here is just basically anytime you put a door or a pipe, it also calculates what the scroll would be like if you started from that. This door, this P door here, is literally just for decorative purposes. So let me get out of custom scroll here. So just to have an outline of a door on the castle at the end. So the other side of the door I just put under the poison where no one can see it or get to it. Um, 
yeah, so that's the custom scroll. So I just kind of played around with the positioning of where it switches between slow and fast until it kind of felt right. Um, upside down piranha plants are a new thing. Uh, you can also do sideways piranha plants, which I think are new. Uh, so that was, those are fun. Uh, parachuting enemies are new. Night themes are new. Uh, the poison level, how does that work? Uh, so in the forest theme, you can do water and at nighttime it's poison. And the poison level, you pull up and down, but there's two different ways you pull it. If you pull this side, uh, it moves the whole thing. And if you grab it right here, then it sets if it goes uh, from one level to another level. And you click this if you want it to go up and down versus just up once. Um, can you have it go down? Yeah. So lots of different things you can do there. I'm gonna undo all of that because I don't want any of that to happen. Thank you, Undo Dog, for changing everything back. Um, so the raft in this I made a lot bigger. Uh, so it was only two of these platforms wide in the original level. I made it four wide because now any level in Mario Maker 2 can be put into a multiplayer pool. Uh, so I just wanted the raft to accommodate a lot more players in case that happened. Honestly, um, designing for multiplayer is such a mess right now because you, there's no real good way to play test multiplayer versus um, levels because there's no way to do that um, locally with four players because you can only do co-op with local four players, I think. And even if you were to set up a room with multiple switches, I don't know that you can intentionally play levels. I don't know, I haven't looked into it. Uh, I just wish there was a way I could just set most of my levels to single player and not even think about multiplayer scenarios. Um, but yeah, um, big coins, that was another big, uh, a new thing here. Does this P-door go anywhere? I don't know. I'm like, why do I have that different number of P doors? Oh, yeah, yeah, because I think I put that on the little thing at the other. Yeah. 10 coin on a parachute. Uh, yeah, and this was just kind of a recreation of the little, like, mushroom person house uh, who's, like, the caretaker for the river raft in my mind. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of this level. I changed the end as well because. This used to be transitioning into the next level of the Super uh, Discord Brothers 3 game, but now that it's in Mario Maker 2, it's totally decontextualized, so I just had to kind of make the beginning and end make sense for this level itself. So anyway, that was uh, the first level I remade. Um, definitely introduced me to a lot of new things. Poison level, um, custom auto scroll, parachutes, and uh, you know, the night music and the night theme here. So, uh, yeah, that's River Ramble Remix. Uh, why am I undoing things? All right, let's just go back to Course World. So the other level we're gonna look at is, ah, Sewage Sludge Splash. So this was for the sequel to Super Discord Brothers 3, Super Discord Brothers. Confusing that we did them out of order, but that's what we did. So Super Discord Brothers is in the style of the original Super Mario Brothers, uh, except because of all the amiibo costumes that you can use in that style in Mario Maker 1, a lot of the worlds were themed around different costumes. So this level that I made was from um, one of the coolest levels in that game, Minion Mines. So all of the costumes are bad guys. So my level was a, using the Bowser Jr. costume, uh, but it's supposed to be an underground cavernous world. Uh, so I came up with the idea of having kind of um, a poisoned uh, swamp, like sewage treatment facility that's underground. Um, and gross, and that also just kind of felt in line with it being a world of bad guys. Um, so that's kind of where the idea for Sewage Sludge Splash came from. And this level actually won the 
Mario Maker subreddit level of the week contest. Uh, I forget what week it was. I think it was for costumes. Um, and so that was a really big honor. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to remake it because it was, you know, kind of seen as a good level by the community. Uh, so you instantly get the costume because then there's very little time that you're Mario. God, I love costumes. I really miss those in Mario Maker 2. They just add so much personality. Like, the fact that you can do those little taunts and just, ugh, Bowser Jr. looks so good in his little clown car. So this area at the beginning of the level here is referencing the previous Minion Mines level, which I think was a Shy Guy level? Um, or Shy Guy was the hidden costume in it. I forget, it's been a while. But anyway, um, so that's why there's this question block. This is specifically how that maker used them in his level, so made that look. So this is supposed to be, again, a water level um, that's not all underwater. So here you're supposed to be like above this poison lake, but you can walk on top of the water, which is weird, but uh, tried to make this big pipeline here where you can see the Koopa sewage coming out. Um, a lot of pipe stacking in this level, which is where you just overlap the pipes. So what's really cool is that when you're underwater, the Bowser Jr. costume turns into the submarine. So that was just like uh, a perfect find. Like once I saw that, I knew I had to make this an underwater level uh, or with Bowser Jr. Um, so anyway, uh, you can see there's this pipe here that's basically a three wide pipe because it's two two wide pipes that are overlapped, shooting out um, some Koopas. I've got these green semi-solids, which definitely look like flowing sewage. Uh, so that was kind of the impetus for this whole level, was thinking about the look of the semi-solid and um, that it kind of could look like flowing green sewage in this otherwise blue pristine water. Um, so that's kind of where I started with this and then uh, came up with the idea of having these pipes spawning Koopas as like a uh, obstacle. Uh, I also looked at a lot of actual Mario water levels from Super Mario Brothers to look at how they were laid out. And so this little area here where you're tempted down with those coins and the one-up is basically straight out of uh, a Mario Maker or a Super Mario Brothers level. We've got some dry bones fish. I forget their official name. And uh, then we go up. And because there's no scroll stop, I had to keep drawing uh, ground tile as far as you can possibly scroll the camera there, just to keep the illusion. Um, we got our checkpoint. Ugh, diagonal checkpoints. That's such like a cute little detail you could do in Mario Maker 1. In Mario Maker 2, they have to be, you know, up, left, right, down. You can't do these fun angles, so. That's just like another little weird detail that they kind of took out. Uh, anyway, I think there's a secret over here. Yep. Um, but now we're kind of in the underground above water section. So I wanted to keep with the same look and feel, um, but I can't, there's no green semi-solid in the underground uh, tile set, so I used vines instead, but that means you can do what I just did and actually grab this, the vines and help with the jump, which is not really what was intended. Um, interesting, I think I made this jump easier in the remix um, in a couple different ways. Oh. So this is a jump that if you, I don't think you can make it without holding the run button. And I've become big on accessibility in video games and uh, a jump where you have to run um, means that it can't be completed by certain types of controllers, sip and puff controllers. Specifically, you can usually only do one kind of button input plus a direction at the same time. So you could do a walking jump, but a running jump is literally impossible with certain types of controllers. So I'm pretty sure I took out the running jumps when I remade this level. Um, here you have to jump, 
like on one of those things to get up here. That's a pretty tricky jump. Uh, oh, here's another running jump. So yeah, this level was, uh, oops, I died. <laughs> died in my own level, shows you how hard it is. Also, all those X's. Sorry, everybody. Um, so this level was World A, which was the 10th world of Super Discord Brothers. Um, I'm gonna cheat at my own level. Oh shoot. What is that little red thing that's sticking out when he's climbing? I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, but is it the tongue of the clown car? Uh, anyway, so it's the 10th world. So it was okay that it was difficult, but... Um, oh, and you can see there are four different types of Koopa coming out of just that three wide pipe. Again, because of pipe stacking, I was able to do that. Can't do that in Mario Maker 2, though. Um, so it is the 10th world, so it's okay to be difficult and include running jumps. Oh, they're little wheels. That's cute, like in the run animation. Um, this part is pretty tricky too. You have to bounce forever on these uh, pair of dry bones or sky bones or fly bones, depending on what you want to call them. Uh, and I haven't taught you about that anywhere in the level previously, so that's kind of like an unfair jump there. Um, so that's definitely something I nixed in the new version, just because again, like, it's not great level design to have a jump like that in the middle of the level that doesn't have any preceding jumps, right? You have to jump from one sky bones to another sky bones without ever having jumping jumped on a sky bones previously in the level. So you don't necessarily even know that you can jump on them infinitely, um, which makes the jump hard if you don't know that. There's another required running jump and that also just is a little too chaotic with all the Koopa sewage going on. Um, here, there's a hidden secret pipe right here because again, I can do that with pipe stacking. I really like the look of this gigantic pipeline corner here, but that wasn't an option. I also have all these excessive grinders. Like, why are there grinders on the pipeline? Um, the theme of the level was that the grinders were supposed to be like plant life uh, in this toxic dump. So putting grinders on the pipes doesn't really make any sense. Uh, so just thematically, that's something I would change. Um, so here we've got a whole bunch of Koopas falling. Go, 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 go! Um, this here with these three tall um, like corridors between one tall ground blocks. This is straight out of like original Super Mario Brothers water levels. Again, I lifted um, little sections like that wholesale just because I really wanted to give it the feel of the original Super Mario Brothers. So even looking at how far apart blocks are uh, is a really helpful thing for that. So this area down here, again, the design is straight out of like Super Mario, aside from the pipe and the semi-solid. So this is a secret costume you can get if you went through that secret pipe I showed earlier. Um, lots of sawweed here. I like that idea of that instead of seaweed, it's sawweed because it actually grows saws on the seaweed because of toxic waste. I don't know. It's a thing. Uh, all right, let's not die in my own level. All right, I just got hit, that's fine. Uh, and I believe there's another, yep, secret pipe right here, which again comes out and uh, can go back in. Why did I even do that? I, oh, I think that's just like a tiny shortcut if you're trying to speed run. That's kind of what that secret's about. Um, and then here, the castle at the end is the next level's all about Goombas inside a fortress. Oh, I died right at the flagpole. That's pretty embarrassing. I was trying to show a secret costume I hid there. Um, I, let's, let's actually show these secret costumes. 
So that was like a cool thing about this project is because it was specifically about Amiibo uh, or specifically in Super Mario Brothers, we could use costumes. So we hid costumes in a lot of levels uh, as little rewards. So, oh yeah, this cute little Koopa costume. Look at that little Koopa. Who wouldn't want to be a Koopa? Um, this is also a pretty awesome costume for this level because you're a turtle and it's water and there's turtles everywhere else. Uh, all right, let's get to the end again and show you the other hidden costume here, which I think was a Goomba, uh, because it's right next to the Goomba part. So to do this, we need to jump off and over so you can jump over the flagpole and uh, get this little Goomba costume here and be with all your Goomba friends that are a preview of the next level. Burp, 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 burp. Uh, so yeah, so that is how it looked in Mario Maker 1. Uh, I love the charm of costumes and I really, really miss them in Mario Maker 2. I understand some of the reasons why they took them out because it's a lot to support and for multiplayer it wouldn't really work. Uh, but I don't care about multiplayer. So I really wish if there were there was a way that costumes would just be uh, levels with costumes would be left out of the multiplayer pool so I could still upload them single player. I spent a lot of money on Amiibo just for unlocking costumes in Mario Maker 1. Uh, and it would have been nice for those Amiibo to work in Mario Maker 2 as well. Even if it was like costumes for my Maker profile. Anyway, that's a rant about that. Hey, it's me. Uh, these pants are called Dorderoys, like corduroys, but they're covered in doors. Uh, I just got them because I got over 5,000 maker points, which is super exciting. Oh, hey, I have um all-time maker points medal. That's really cool. Uh, the medals in this game are pretty complicated. Uh, not as straightforward as the last game. I wish... I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the metal system in this game. I'm happy that I've gotten some. Uh, that's like a huge honor. But I feel like a lot of the stuff that's on the more info page is actually what I want to see about myself or about other makers, uh, as opposed to these medals, which most of them are just going to be blank for most people. Uh, anyway, that was a side note. Let's look at Return to Sewage Lagoon. Description. Navigate your boot submarine past sewage and sawweed. Try to get 200 coins. All right, let's play this level. Oh, I really was proud of my use of the fart sound effects <laughs> for the uh, sewage pipes. Uh, this is another one with the Night Forest theme because uh, this is about like a poisoned lake or, you know, a polluted lake, that is. Uh, so it made sense to use the thing. And it just so happened that the night theme in Forest has that perfect green semi-solids that is right behind the um, giant Koopa pipes that makes it kind of look like sewage pouring down. Uh, because that didn't exist in an above ground theme in Mario Maker 1. It was only in underwater, which is what was the impetus for the whole level I made the first place, which is how cool those semi-solids looked underwater and the idea of them being from sewage pipes. Anyway, um, in Mario Maker 1, this was a level where you are Bowser Jr. in his little clown car submarine. But since there's no costumes, sad face, uh, in Mario Maker 2, I wanted it to have the same feel, so it should be something where you're only ever a small character. I'm always Toadette, because why would you be Mario, Luigi, or Blue Toad when you could be Toadette? Uh, anyway, so, but I wanted it so you could take a hit and not just have to be just a small character, so I did Boots. I give you three boots here at the beginning because, again, if multiplayer was playing this, that would be fun if three people could get boots, the other person can't. Uh, other thing I'm using here is scroll stop. So uh, the screen is not going to the right, 
uh, because I have that vertical uh, block, you know, vertical wall of ground blocks and also different colored pipes here. Um, and since there's no pipe stacking, uh, in the first one, all of these pipes were supposed to be like three wide pipes, uh, but now I can't overlap the pipes, so they have to be four wide to kind of get the same effect. Um, I also changed kind of the aesthetics here to make it look like the sewage is spilling out, so I made the ground these block tiles most of the place, uh, and used the green... Oh, the boot doesn't actually work to hit enemies underwater. Oops. Uh, so yeah, and then I'm using blue pipes here, those spawn more slowly, uh, because again, with not being able to do this the same way I did in the original, where it was three wide, uh, that was a lot harder because you can't control um, making those spawn at the same time, so it was just easier to do them as uh, blue pipes. This pipe got a lot thinner. Uh, the hitbox for grinders, I think, changed as well, so I had to spread out some of the saw weed there. Again, using blue pipes, because otherwise that part became impossible. Uh, and some orange pipes. Alright, let's checkpoint this stuff. Get a boot. Boot allows us to hop on there. Uh, and now this part is above, so we're looking at the rising and falling poison. I'm running out of time because I'm talking so much, but that's okay. It's my level. I can do what I want. Uh, a lot of this is pretty similar to how it played in the original one, uh, but the poison is different because in the last one was just kind of an open cave. Uh, it was part of the Minion Mines world, Minion Mines Forever. Uh, ah! And so technically you could jump out of your boot and like cheese your way over some of these pipes, but if you do that, you lose your boot. So I felt like that was an okay trade-off. Um, whereas in the original one, you couldn't really get up there because you wouldn't have had the boot for the extra jump. And I died in my own level. That's sad. Hey, look at all those X's. I'm not alone. <laughs> um... Yeah, so if you die, your coin collecting goes back to zero, which is sad, because then you can't really... If you're trying to get all 200 coins, you have to do it all in one run. So, I don't know that, like, get all the coins is a great bonus goal on my levels, but it's just a little something extra. <laughs> ah! uh, and the fart sound effects was new for Mario Maker 2, so <laughs> I just, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, all right, let me not die in my own level here. Oh. Uh, oh shoot, <laughs> almost died again. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, dry bones don't uh, die with the poison. Other enemies will just die if poison touches them. Um, makes sense, they're undead, but uh, definitely makes for interesting thematic levels. Um, get the last boot here. Get back in my boot submarine. Boot marine. Um, this part underwater... Uh, goes back to, again, being pretty much what it was in the first one. Again, just the pipe widths I had to adjust, and that kind of spread the whole level out just a little bit more, but because of scroll stop, I actually was able to save the space that I used up. Uh, so that's okay. This was a secret costume area, I believe, in the first level, and now it's that 30 coin. Oh, shoot. These dry bones fishes are killing me. Uh, I'm pretty proud of how I did the uh, cross stitching of the pipes here. I thought that looked pretty good uh, since I couldn't overlap them the way I would have ideally. Uh. Uh, 
you can see there's a coin over there, so if you were able to keep your boot, you could have jumped on top of those grinders to get that. Oh shoot, <laughs> oh, I died at the very end. Oh, that's sad. I'm going to get this coin if it kills me. Beat my level. <laughs> I also like how the poison goes down at the end. It goes down to whatever the default level was. Uh, so I felt like it kind of reveals this seaweed castle at the end. Alright, cool. So that was Return to Sewage Lagoon. Um, so yeah, so those are the first two levels. And um, it was really fun to remix my levels from Mario Maker 1, uh, you know, I kind of just had my Switch and Wii U both on at the same time and followed along. It's kind of like following the instructions to a Lego set, but it's a uh, Mario level and it's my own thing. Uh, but then reinterpreting it and making different jumps easier and stuff like that. So that was my two remixed levels. I have a couple other levels that I've made, uh, Catathwomp Canyon and Peepa's Crate Break and Key Hunt. Um, I'll probably do separate videos on those at some point, uh, but wanted to start with these remixes because it definitely um, was how I first interacted with the game. And for those of you who are transitioning from Mario Maker 1 into 2, or just trying to figure out what you can do, um, I think it's an interesting kind of case study of what I learned from redoing my own levels. I don't know that I actually gave you that many lessons. That was my premise in the beginning, but I did this all in one take and I'm gonna upload it like that. No, I'll probably edit it. Um, but yeah, that's that.